In that little package that you see being delivered is our new model table cover. If you want to call it a cover. Anyway, Tennessee Jim, if you're listening, we got another famous green towel. Yeah, got one downstairs, now we got one upstairs. This is probably going to be the last one, unless I spill paint or glue or something all over it. Anyway, way we go here. Okay, what do I think of it? Well, I think it's going to be okay. It's probably about 95 to 98% as big as they said it was going to be. If I stretch it right out, I can almost get it there. Now, I did put it through the wash. I did uh, wash and dry it to try and get some of the wrinkles out of it. It, was been, it had been folded up so tight. And... Uh, Anyway, I think it's going to be all right. I'll, uh, I'll bring the camera over and we'll put the macro lens on and I'll show you the type of pile it has, if you can call it a pile. Now, now they call this a towel, but it's, it's more like a, it feels like a chamois almost. Anyway, I'll, I'll bring the camera over. Now you're going to recognize this as the head of the pin that we've sometimes used as a glue applicator and the other end of it it's got the holder downer for the railings when we were doing the Bismarck we found that kind of handy and we we're also using it as a glue applicator um, anyway give you an idea something really really small like there's a little tiny fluffy here I deliberately picked that so I, I know where the center of view is and um, I can I can see that it even the smallest piece of photo etch I mean, if, if it's any smaller than that, I mean, I can't do anything with it anyway. It's not going to get lost in the pile here. And, and this is soft enough that it's not going to harm the bottom of the, of the ship or anything like that. And, uh, yeah, and, and yet, like I say, it's, it feels like a, like a chamois. It doesn't, I wonder what a little droplet of water would do. I'm going to see if I can get a little drop of water and see if, how it wicks away. I'm just, I'm just curious, you know, because they call it a towel, right? Okay, this is ordinary tap water in a used pipette. Now, is it going to sit there like a, a, like a bead, or is it going to instantly wick away? If it instantly wicks away, it's a towel. Well, kind of instantly. Yeah, let's call it a towel. So I wonder what this is on here. Would that be mold release? Anyway, it doesn't matter. I've uh, I've got the uh, sprue connections off of the uh, holes now, and both at both uh, both front and back. It, it's funny; these ones were okay, and the other ones weren't. Anyway, um, now for this one here, I uh, was going to take this off, and then I checked the manual. And this is going to be completely covered up with something. There's a piece of superstructure that goes over top of this. So I don't need to bother with this. I'll just, I'll just leave it. It's not hurting anything, so why not, right? At least that's the way I look at it. Okay. It just hit me what this reminds me of. It's like the top of a pool table. Or the top of a table that you play cards on. A game table. Yeah. I wonder if they use this uh, same material for that. Why not? Feels like it. Now, as the manual for the Bismarck da did, the uh, manual for the hood does not talk anywhere about, you know, where to paint the boot line or anything like that. So we're going to have to just strictly go with the drawing that came with the paint marking guide. Now remember, this is just a drawing, I'm, but it, it's going to be pretty close. So now the boot line on the Bismarck hull was the last thing we painted on the hull, whereas with the hood, I want to do this other technique whereby we paint the boot line on first, sort of. And uh, so we have to determine where where does it go here? Like, you know, it's going to be right, right above well, this, 
where's something to point here? You know how I like to point and poke. Maybe I should be moving the camera a little different here. Anyway, yeah, let me move the camera a little different here. Okay, I hope I moved in close enough for you. If you're watching this on a decent computer monitor, you should be able to see this line right here. It's this, this line right here is actually this sort of a, I believe it's a type of gunnel for docking maybe, so the ship would come up against the dock or whatever. That's the only thing I can think of it. It's for, because it's way too high to be any kind of uh, stabilizer like this one down here is. Anyway, now if you're watching this on your smart device, and in all likelihood, you're going to have trouble seeing all these fine details here. You know, my opinion is, and I know I've kind of alluded to that in the in the past, that these smart devices are have only one good advantage, and that is you can take them with you wherever you go. Otherwise, you know, for actually just viewing, the <laughs> forget it. I've got one. Well, it's an iPad mini. So, anyway. Um... Here we go. This right here is this right here. So the boot line goes, it looks like the, the bottom of it is right about here and the top of it would be just below those windows there. Now what I had planned on using was this masking tape. Now, maybe this is a, a smidgen too wide here. Don't want to be wasting this. But let's just see, how, how would that work now? Okay, so the, the top is going to come just right there. You know what, this tape might be just a little bit on the wide side because it would have to go like that. Now, you may remember me talking about what I was planning on doing. I was going to take and use this uh, Steinol Res uh, primer, the black, and and uh, have it as the boot line. And I was going to spray it on first, probably, you know, it would be a, a line from probably about an inch wide or so. It wouldn't matter if there was overspray, it's primer anyway, right? And uh, it'll go on, then I'll put the tape on over top in, in the right place. And then after everything is said and done, then we peel the tape off and we have our uh, boot line. At least that was the plan, but I'm kind of concerned now because it's, it's pretty obvious that this, this uh, I think this is, is this 10 millimeter? I don't know if I can get tape, but and the next size down might be too narrow. But according to the paint scheme here, it shouldn't be this wide. I'll have to think about it here. Now, I just went on one of our local hobby store's websites here, and uh, I, I'd go on Cellar Dweller's website, except they don't have their stock online, so you don't know what they got unless you actually go there, or maybe give them a call, but uh, I, I prefer to go online, and that's the, that's the wave of the future, so I wish Cellar Dweller would get with the program, but uh, anyway, we've talked about that before too, haven't we? And uh, yeah, this uh, hobby store's got 6 millimeter. And uh, as long as we're talking about getting more supplies here, maybe we should be talking about paint. Now, before we start talking about paint here, I've printed out a couple of lines, 10 millimeter and 6 millimeter. I drew them out in Corel Draw. They're going to be pretty close. We can check them in a minute. And uh, I'm just doing this so that I can get it nice and thin here so that I can put it up against the hull. I've had this stapler for going on, when did I first get this stapler? I got this stapler in 1964, the fall of 1964, and it's still working. Now here's some more trivia that you probably don't want to know. Anyway, I got to thinking about that stapler, and I started to think, you know, I think I've got a picture of the store I bought it in, but I couldn't find it. All I've got is a picture of the town. Well, it's it's sort of a town. It used to be an Air Force base. You can see the hangars there. Yeah, that was a long time ago. I took this picture probably within a month 
Oh, maybe two months of when I bought that stapler. Yeah, now know more about the stapler. Okay, we'll just cut this off here like this. There we go. Let's just measure this, see how close it is, just for the fun of it. Okay, it took me a minute, but I finally got the caliper here adjusted for 10 millimeters. Don't know if you can see that or not. And let's just check here. My experience has been that the printer uh, uh, is, uh, my printer is pretty accurate for a cheap printer. Yeah, that looks pretty good. It might be a smidgen wider than 10, but uh, I don't know. It's so close you can hardly tell. Uh, okay, if the 10 is right, the 6 probably is. Okay, clearly our 10 millimeter was too wide here. Now, we are going to want to go on what you might call this, I was going to say panel, but it's not really a panel. But but this one right, right here, don't don't look at the black line, just go by the the uh, the plating. That's that's the word I was looking for, the plating. So this this plate from here to here is this this plate from here to here and it it looks like the boot line is just halfway up and almost in the middle maybe a little bit on the low side okay so if we put our six millimeter like that it's much more believable it, it might even actually be a little bit too large but I think that the six millimeter will be just about right now, I thought the same thing for the 10 a while ago, remember when we tested it out? It was a couple of weeks ago. Anyway, yeah, I'm going to go with the 6mm. Now let's talk about the paint. I've gone through all my paints here, and it turns out that almost half of them would be a shade of grey. Well, almost half. Now, I've got some old enamel here, and this goes back to the Titanic. Not the Titanic that's at the bottom of the ocean, but the Titanic that's down in my workshop. So these are like 40 years old or more, and I don't want to use enamel anyway, so they're out. Now we've got our uh, Steinel st res. Gee, I said it good before, how come I had trouble this time? Anyway, we got the Steinel res uh, primer, gray primer, and I know that that works really good like on the railings. Remember we used it on the railings of the Bismarck and it did a fantastic job so I might use this but as far as painting anything uh, on the hull with this goes that's out too. Now this stuff here the it's probably good uh, but I want to stick with the Tamiya so that one's out and <clears throat> now this isn't really a gray it's, a, it's called a black it's called a natto black and, or NATO black, depending on how you want to say it. Uh, but it's not a pure black. Here's the pure black. But anyway, this is this is just too dark, so it's out. So that kind of leaves us with this, uh, uh, what do they call it, Lynn Gray? L, I don't know how you say that, L-I-N Gray, Lynn Gray, I guess? Anyway, it doesn't matter. So it'll be like this one, could be uh, the dark, uh, then we'd have the light, could be the medium, and the sky, could be the light. So we'd have light gray, medium gray, and dark gray. This, by the way, if I remember, is what we painted the hull of the Bismarck. And yeah, it was sort of a greeny gray, but it, it looked all right. All right. Um, yeah, so I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to order some more, of, make up my mind which one of these I'm going to use. Probably, probably this one, this one, and this one. And uh, yeah, so I'll just order some more of those. Uh, speaking of ordering now, the, the uh, hobby store, they, they don't let you go in and browse through the store anymore, at least not the one that I'm probably going to end up going to. And, um, well, we'll see. Anyway, that's probably going to be tomorrow, folks. So, thanks for watching, and all being well, we'll be seeing you tomorrow. <laughs>